you know, some of their asks are non-starters, like overturning the results of the election that we just had. Uh, but in terms of uh, responding to their demands uh, or, or legitimizing them by engaging, I'm highlighting that I'm worried about setting a precedent uh, that a blockade on Wellington Street can, can lead to changing public policy. People need to be heard, uh, but we need to get that balance right. Uh, and then uh, she agreed that I need to be cautious and I don't want to set any bad precedents. Okay, so fairly self-explanatory. There's, there's a, a willingness to, to discuss, but you, you were concerned about setting a precedent where uh, a blockade could equal a, a, a change in public policy. Is that fair? Yeah, uh, I, mean, I think we we have uh, a robust functioning democracy and uh, protests, public protests are an important part of making sure we're getting messages out there and Canadians are getting messages out there and highlighting how they feel about various issues. Uh, but using protests to demand uh, changes to public policy um, is something that, that I think is, is, is worrisome. Okay. Um, so thank you, Mr. Although, Clark. sorry, to a certain extent. No, no, extent, please go on. Yeah, you know, protest if you're out protesting that the government is, you know, shutting down a, a safe injection site or something, you are asking for changes in, in public policy. But there is a difference between uh, occupations uh, and, and, you know, saying we're not going until this has changed uh, in a way that is massively disruptive. Uh, and potentially dangerous uh, versus just saying, yeah, we're protesting because we want uh, we want public policy to change and we're trying to convince people to get enough of them that politicians will listen to enough people saying, okay, uh, I'm going to lose votes if I don't change this. Uh, that's the usual way uh, protests uh, uh, can be effective in, in our democracies. Okay, that's a fair point of distinction. Thank 